Whether you are just setting foot on the Golden Isles for the first time, or you know your way around the Land of the Gods already, a few solid tips can help make your experience that much better. Hello friends, Livid here, one half of the team behind Legacy Gaming, and today we will be going through all the things I wish I knew sooner in Immortals Phoenix Rising. Now, I think it goes without saying, but you should 100% enjoy this game at your own pace in the way you want. But if you're looking for some solid tips, you've come to the right place. Immortals Phoenix Rising isn't inherently a complex game, but they do sort of toss you right into the fold outside of the starter zone and expect you to come to your own conclusions about things as you play. Some of these things can literally make your experience way less tedious and honestly, more enjoyable, while some will just give you an outright edge from the start. I want to correct the record and set something straight that we talked about in our launch day guide. While doing the main story quest of the game will reward you with extremely powerful god and goddess buffs, there are absolutely no substitution for improving your overall stats. In fact, I'd actually go so far as to say spending a little time early on grinding out side quests, challenges, and materials for upgrades is the better way to go, doing the main story quest a little later on or as you are collecting things. Now doing this will give you the materials to upgrade your weapon's damage, your damage resistance on your armor, potion and arrow capacity, and even new skills and abilities that make your toolkit for dealing with enemies way more robust. A perfect example of this is the upgrade to the Bracers of Heracles that let you grapple to any enemy, even the ones in the sky, to deal with them with your melee weapons. Now this makes things like Harpies, who are an absolute nuisance early on, an absolute breeze. In this same vein, there is one quest that is incredibly easy to complete and it shows up early on that you should do 100% as soon as it's available. Shortly after doing a little bit of the main quest in the Valley of Eternal Spring, a meteor will come down being struck by a bolt of lightning and will crash off in the distance. This quest will introduce you to Phosphor, an amazing bird companion that grants you a seriously strong ability and even has some incredibly potent upgrades. It will task you with heading into the hard region of the map, the Gates of Tartarus, to retrieve a Seed of the Dead. Now, don't fight the enemies here at your early level. They will absolutely kick your ass early on. Simply run by them, grab the seed, and leave. Simple as that. Once you get the seed back to Phosphor, he will become available to you. This amazing little companion in his base form, since there are various skins that change his perks in the world, will cost three stamina chunks to use and will hit the enemy three times. Now each hit will return one stamina orb. Combo this with some basic sword attacks as the enemy is being hit, and this attack basically costs nothing. It's a really solid interrupt and a ranged attack against any enemy in the game. Upgrades for Phosphor include the ability to deal AoE damage on each hit, the ability to go invisible for guaranteed stealth attacks and even for taming mounts, and even the ability to make a stone copy of yourself for puzzles. All around, this little bird will become your best little buddy. This next tip will make your travels across the land easily three times more efficient. Hidden in the world are various mounts that you can tame, each with their own little intrinsic benefits. Now the ones I'm about to mention, however, have three full stamina bars for sprinting, meaning you will need a stop to recharge way less often and get around that much quicker. Both of these early mounts are found in the Valley of Eternal Spring. You can find Indica around the watery grove in the northern part of this region, while Tyrion can be located in the watery grove to the absolute south of this region. Sneaking up on them may take a few attempts to get them, but if you have that phosphor upgrade that makes you invisible, any taming will be a piece of cake. Regardless of how you tame them, they are well worth the effort. Now, you've heard me talk about getting upgrades to your abilities for a while, and you may be wondering where in the world do you get them, and how can you get so many that are required for all the upgrades. On your map, after you've thoroughly scouted an area, challenge missions can be located. Do any available challenge missions you see on your map whenever you can. This includes the arrow challenge, the fresco puzzles, the harp puzzles, and even navigation puzzles. These will test your agility and problem-solving skills, but are key to getting Charon coins, your gateway to all your skill and ability upgrades in the game. Arrow challenges will have you ignite Apollo's arrow through a nearby flame and have you guide it through a series of rings until you reach a brazier that needs to be ignited. Some of these are really long, and you might not have the stamina to reach them right away. 
A small tip for these, however, is that you can consume stamina potions mid arrow flight to extend the stamina used for this ability, often letting you complete challenges well before you should. Fresco challenges will have you simply rearranging blocks on a grid to restore the fresco painting in its original look. Navigation challenges will test your agility and pathfinding skills to find the quickest path from start to finish before the timer runs out. And lastly, small harp challenges will reward you with a specific note sequence that you will need to play on the larger harp in that area. Regardless what challenge you encounter, make sure you do every single one, as coin payouts can vary from a measly two all the way to eight or more in some cases. Now this one is quick, but will probably get overlooked. Once you have two coins, get the telekinesis gathering perk as soon as possible. This allows you to pick up massive amounts of resources within an AOE of you and saves you so much time. An added benefit is running over a resource with your mount will auto collect that resource and proc the AOE gathering perk as well, allowing you to rapidly stock up on potion materials at all times during your travels. This next tip also seems really straightforward, but if you aren't doing this, you are likely missing tons of potential materials and even some upgrade resources. First up, don't shoot down pomegranates. Hit the trees with your heavy attacks and then collect the fruit that falls. Combine this with that harvest perk and you'll never be out of health potions again. In the same vein, clear out dense collections of bushes whenever you see them. Doing so can often reveal hidden resources for potions underneath them. Now this last one shocked even me. Certain trees in the world, if you look closely, will have an orangish particle emitting from their base. If you heavy attack to cut this tree down, amber will become exposed, an essential upgrade material for your potions. Also while you're exploring, you may see colored large crystals that are the same color as your essential upgrade material. These provide huge amounts of that specific resource and will be essential to getting enough of them to continue upgrading, so don't miss these. And even with these crystal deposits, that's still not enough to get your upgrades really moving. In comes Hermes Heroic Task Board. Make sure you always have all the available tasks from Hermes Heroic Task Board. These reward, in addition to skins, huge amounts of upgrade materials, ambrosia, and even sometimes bolts of lightning. If you don't do these, your progression will be incredibly slow in this game. They are absolutely essential to getting your gear upgraded quickly. While you're at it, Make sure you do the daily and weeklies for Electrum on the right hand side. This rewards the currency used to buy rotating cosmetics from Hermes that would normally be in the premium store. Free cosmetics for playing the game? Yes please. As you continue to explore the world more, you will start completing the puzzle dungeons known as vaults. At the end of each dungeon is a reward such as a bolt of lightning, but did you know there's also a secret chest in every single one of these? Make sure you spend the extra time in each vault fully exploring the puzzles for these extra rewards, since you can get weapons, armor, and even skins for those things from these chests. You also don't want to have to go back inside of all of these later on, and redo the puzzles just to pick up the chest again. So spend the extra time early on and reap the rewards. Last up, I wanted to get you kitted out ASAP with what is in my opinion one of the best overall sets of gear in the game. Now it might not be your style, and that's okay, but it boasts one of the best buffs on each piece that I've yet to play with. You are looking for the Brood of Typhon set. This even includes a sword and axe that matches the set's same style. The Brood of Typhon helmet base perk offers you a 12% chance to triple your damage on every hit and increases in potency each time you level your helmets up. If you get this up to level four, you gain an additional 20% chance to triple your stun every time you land a hit as well. You can find this helmet as a secret chest reward within Odysseus's prison by igniting your arrow and striking a wooden box on the top right ledge. This will reveal another arrow plate to strike and will open up the barrier to the additional chest. The Brood of Typhon breastplate base perk offers you a 21% chance to triple your stamina gain back on each hit and increases in potency each time you level your armor up. This means your light sword attacks become insanely potent in keeping your stamina resource high with this piece. Additionally, at level four, you gain a 10% chance on each hit to increase your combo meter automatically by plus 12. The reason this is insane is that the higher your combo meter goes, the more damage you will continue to do. You can find this armor piece a short distance away from the vault right here. This puzzle simply requires you to ignite the braziers below as if you took the lit ones behind you and reflected it to match. 
Once you do so, enjoy your now complete armor set. The Cyclone Sword's base perk offers you a 24% chance to do triple damage while performing your sword in-air combo attacks, and increases in potency each time you level your swords up. Additionally, at level 4, anytime you perfect dodge, you will restore 120% of a stamina chunk, meaning you get even more stamina sustain. You can find this weapon here at the guarded chest location. And finally, the Tempest Axe. The base perk offers you a 24% chance to do triple damage while performing your axe in air combos, and increases in potency each time you level your axes up. Additionally, your axe cleave will now provide an extra 50% stun against all enemies. This weapon can be found in the guarded chest just to the northwest of the Hall of the Gods. Altogether, these will massively boost your DPS via just about every sort of attack you do in the game, in addition to providing you great stamina resource management. Overall, these have been just insane and have great perk synergy, and will make you quite the force on the battlefield. Since we're talking about amazing items, let's just talk about some stuff you can also get for free. Ubisoft is going all in on Immortals Phoenix Rising, and Twitch Prime members right now can take advantage. From now until February, you can claim a bundle that gives you access to a free 3 stamina bar horse, a phosphor skin, and a full set of cosmetic armor. This, just like everything in the store, is cosmetic and offers no changes or advantages during gameplay. After you've redeemed this set, head to your store in-game and select the Own tab from the bottom. Here, you can claim your skins in order to start using them. In addition to that bundle, you can also claim a free small resource bundle which can jumpstart your potion making. All you need to do is link your Ubisoft account to Ubisoft Connect. It only takes a few minutes, and you'll walk away with dozens of important resources that will help substantially in the early game. Now, like I said at the beginning, play how you want, but these tips should help just about anyone out there. We hope you enjoyed our breakdown of some of the things we really wish we knew sooner, and maybe saved you some time. If you like our videos and want more great content in your feed, don't forget to like and subscribe to Legacy Gaming. And if you're looking for a fantastic community to join, consider joining us on Discord. We have over 6,000 members spread across dozens of great games, and we post all news updates and video notifications on the games we cover over there. We'd love to see you come hang out with us. Now, my name is Livid, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on. <laughs>